Right now, around the world, there are 9.2 million people living with HIV who do not have access to life-saving treatment. Every minute, a life is lost to AIDS. This is not fate. We can change it. We even know how. We must let communities on the front lines of the AIDS pandemic lead the way. The evidence is set out very clearly in our new World AIDS Day report. It is communities who know best how to design HIV strategies to reach people most in need of services. Take, for example, the Youth Empowerment Group in Namibia using e-bikes to deliver services to young people who often cannot attend clinics because they are in school. Take the example of the community groups in Ukraine who, when war prevented people from getting to hospitals, organized community networks to rush life-saving HIV medicines to people across the country. That was amazing. And you remember the grassroots movements who led the iconic struggles of the 90s and early 2000s from South Africa to Thailand to Brazil, challenging pharma monopoly of antiretroviral medicines. It is their advocacy in the streets, before courts and parliaments that pushed the cost of these life-saving medicines down from $25,000 per person per year in 1995 to as low as $70 per person per year today. These community leaders continue to fight for new medical technologies to be available for everyone, everywhere. There is no doubt. Community leadership builds stronger and healthier societies. Communities are the everyday heroes of the AIDS response. To communities, I say this. I salute you for your courage and sacrifice. Thank you for continuing to drive forward progress against AIDS. I stand in solidarity with you. This World AIDS Day is not only a moment to honor the leadership of communities, though. It is a call to action to governments to fully support communities' life-saving work and to remove the barriers that stand in their way. Too often, community leadership is unacknowledged, under-resourced, and in some places, even under attack. Let me remind you, in 2021, member states of the United Nations renewed their commitment to support communities in the HIV response. To end AIDS as a public health threat, that commitment they made needs to be realized everywhere. And so, I urge governments, international organizations, and all partners to do three things. First, ensure that community leadership is made central in all HIV policies and programs. As communities say, nothing about us without us. Two, ensure that communities' leadership roles are properly resourced. In 2012, over 31% of all HIV resources were channeled through civil society organizations. Nine years later, in 2021, 
that number fell to 20%. This backsliding in commitment has left many community-led organizations struggling to survive and deliver to their people. And this is costing lives. Third, I urge governments to protect everyone's human rights. Right now, we see anti-human rights, anti-women's rights, and anti-democracy forces threatening the work and lives of our brave community leaders. But we must be hopeful and we must remain vigilant in defense of human rights. That is why I applaud the growing wave of countries who have been repealing the harmful colonial laws that criminalize LGBT people simply for being who they are. To protect everyone's health, we must protect everyone's human rights. Communities are not in the way, they light the way. On World AIDS Day, I say to you all, let communities lead. Thank you.